those go on the feet. Okay. So there's five. This these, um, mm -hmm. these two. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's it. Okay. Here's the other really long one. And then that's the short one. Oh, that's the one that goes in the middle. That's the long one. This is the shorter one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do. All right. Now, let's put them there. There we go. Okay. Now we can just put those in and then take the okay. washers. We could actually. So I just like that this is so simple to do. You can put mm -hmm. it in your car, you can take it out wherever yeah. you want yep. to put it up. And just Should you be pounding on the board? No. No. Definitely. You don't want to dent it. Right, because you don't dent it. Right. Okay. okay. Now we can hold it up and put it on the feet. Okay. Okay. There. And it, this gets one of these long ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Those are the four that are left. So. Okay. okay. And this is sort of reminding me of putting that together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how exciting! Yeah. Pieces. <laughs> For the yurt. Yeah. And much heavier. <laughs> yes. I love that about this yeah. loom that it's so light. Yeah, yeah, that is. That it's really easy to do. Great. Okay. All right. Now we can just stand it up. One person can just move it too. Like, you tell me where, like right here. I'll move it over. Yeah. Let me get a that way. Someone can get behind too. Yep. Look at right. that! Oh, right. that's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Okay, some green and blue. Knowing that this will be fun to Here is how you measure the red thread. Mm -hmm. Is that you're gonna um, see this first one is a double thread? Okay. But I think we could just make it like this. So you're gonna double this amount mm -hmm. like this, and make sure you have enough that's hanging down. And have enough yeah. that's hanging down. So we're gonna just make it a little bit longer, I think. Mm -hmm. and this is. Um, I have a red thread in the middle, just so that you can tell where the center is. Okay all the time. Mm -hmm. You always know where the center is. So it has one red thread and 
on the journey loom, this is so that you know where your center is okay. also. Uh -huh. And you put it right underneath this right. center so, bolt yeah. okay. so that it looks like this. Then you're going to wrap it over the front mm -hmm. like that, okay. split it, and um, basically you just tighten it so that it has a little sort of twang. Okay. And then tie a bow like that. Okay. And the rest of the threads that we're going to be using on this loom are um, garden twine. Oh, great. Okay. I want to measure one on your side. Okay. All we need is one, and then we can measure all the warp threads from that. From that one, okay. Yeah. So, um, and again, it's double. Yes, so we're going to just measure that double. Looks like I need more. Okay. So if I have it here, that's it. That looks good. So this is our front that faces the library. Okay. And it goes... So it goes over, over. that's right, mm -hmm. through. Okay. And then it moves, yeah, about a quarter an inch, a little bit Even closer. closer. Okay. Yeah, like that. And then you're going to... I think all of these could be on the front like this. Okay. And we'll bring this one around too. Okay. And then just make sure that they're yes, not twisted. Yes, that's right. right. And, then and it goes forward okay. over okay. the front, splits, and then you're going to the right there. do it. Yep, right in front. But first you have to do the knot, the first half, okay. and then you sort of pull that tight, and then lift it up. Uh, this yes, with this your up? thumbs, kind right. of like this. So what you're going to be doing is pulling it forward oh, okay. and up and then down. Okay. And when you do that, you listen to it again, and you can even, do you can more. really, so it makes it mm -hmm. like sort of a twang. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And if you can bring this over before you tighten it, it's much easier. Okay. So we're just bringing it to the spot, mm -hmm. out, and then you can do it up, and then the bow. Right. So it kind of makes that. Okay. And we'll do the red one so that it comes to the front here, too. Okay. There we go. Okay, right in the center. So there you go. And then you can push that up. So warping is kind of fun. It's just a practice. And by the yep. time you finish warping this, you'll be really, really good at it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Great. And what's really great is if any of these get loose during the weaving, mm -hmm. they're just all separate. Right, so you can just you will tighten, tighten one. that okay. one, okay. which is nice. Yeah. Usually it's a figure eight, like on the Navajo loom. Mm -hmm. You can't tighten them except to put sticks in and sort of make oh, them tighter. I see. Okay. But this you can just tighten. Because the, and they're all bows. So they yeah. Just, any one. You can Great. go okay. right across and tighten them all. Mm -hmm. Or if they're all loose, sometimes I just weave a stick in. Mm -hmm. and that, and it'll it, tighten and them that, all. Okay. And you can weave them in the other shed, put it on the mm -hmm. bottom, and it'll tighten that bottom one. Okay. So. I think this is good. This could be just a teeny weensy bit shorter. Like, just two inches shorter. Okay, now this is the length we're going to be warping all of the rest of okay. them. And then you hold right there, right here. Okay. and then I go back. Right. Now if you have kids, mm -hmm. it's really fun that they stand on either end of this and one person is the runner. Mm -hmm. They just run back and forth yeah. between the two people. Mm -hmm. And so you have three people warping. <laughs> and it's really fun to have three kids yeah. warping because okay. they love this little game here. Yeah. And they're good at it, and they can just stand. So two hold it, and then mm -hmm. one runs back and forth like this, and they catch the end, just like that. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're going to use up two balls of garden twine. Okay, so now we're going to just fold it in half. And um, actually, we're going to... 
put it around this top post like this. Okay. And sort of even it like that. So it just hangs it's just like right. that. So you're going to cut all these loops that are left on both ends. Cut this end off and cut the loops. And each of these is a warp thread. So here's our warp. And the way that it makes it so easy to do this is that you hold one side and then you pull out. And so that is. And then there's your. There's your thread. So you're going to fold it in half. And you have one person who is standing up and putting them on the okay. top. The so if person. one person is like on a chair or a, a bench or something mm -hmm. in the back, and so you're going to be, for example, putting them on like that. Okay. And then you, you, so you do it. Okay. You're putting it on like Put that. Pull it over. Right. Like so. And then my job is to, and then you hand it to me separate, so I don't have okay. to, like right. this. Yep. And then, so now you take the next and one, and as you're doing that, I'm um, tying this one on. And it's a real teamwork, and you have four people warping the loom. Okay. okay. Um, two on the other side, mm -hmm. and two on this side. So they kind of are having fun seeing who can warp each Dude, side of the loom first. Uh -huh. No, I'm not remembering. Just the, the other way. Yes. Over. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's it. And so then we become a team, and mm -hmm. we go at about the same speed. Right. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. <laughs> And um, that way, the whole loom gets warped in kind of a, a really orderly and quick way. Yeah, right. Because of one person. Yeah, one person it. can do this. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have all those people doing it, but it just goes faster. And especially one person sitting and one person standing mm -hmm. goes really well, because it's hard to stand and sit and stand right. and sit like that. that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. and... I don't recommend that you do all the top and then find the bottom ones. It's way too much trouble. Okay. <laughs> they get confused. They yeah. do. They get yeah. all tangled again. You yeah. think, oh, does this go to that one? Or how does that work? Although it is possible. Right. But Anything's yeah. possible here. So. Yeah. This is, oops. This one and on the other one, we'll do it the other way so that I do the top one and then okay. you can tie it on the bottom and then we'll both have the experience of doing both sides of it. Oh, this the loom. Great. And multiple well, this weavings, is what I'm right? really excited yeah. about working with you as a steward of the loom, mm -hmm. making sure that you feel really comfortable with all the parts of putting it together, warping right. it, weaving on it, finishing it, taking it off, and delivering it to the person who it goes to. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then rewarping it with kids. Right. You know, how do you yeah. do that? So, um, this is really great to just have this time with you as a steward to talk about what mm -hmm. kind of materials you might like. Well, you said you've been collecting some things. A few things, yep. And I've been keeping my eye out for for others. What kind of things um, have you been I've, collecting? I actually collected some wool fabric Ooh, over at great. home. Well, maybe we could start by just um, putting in fabric and stuff that looks like a garden. Right, Weaver so, garden at mm -hmm. the bottom with some flowers and mm -hmm. um, even build up into their new house, kind of, or just right, things right. that are sort of some photographs or but we could start with the earth or with the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the earth goes yeah, yeah. right on that bridge yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Great, this looks really nice. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. All right. So wow, we okay, we're down to the last one. one. So now we get to do the other ball and do the other side. How do you th what do you think? Is this enough for one side? Almost. We can yeah. see. I have more. We can make a wider warp mm -hmm. if you decide that's what you want to do. So it'll just, I don't know. It'll that be might like be, this. I wouldn't mind starting with something that's something not too big yeah, for the first yeah. one. Yeah, and then. Yeah.
Otherwise, it doesn't that do anything. That makes more sense, yeah. And so and now you want to pull it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. That's it. Oops, not first. <laughs> the Native American weaving in this area is basketry. Uh huh. Okay. Um, but the colonial weaving in this area is definitely um, carvelet, four harness, you know, early American kind of weaving. Mm -hmm. And um, I think just the history of weaving itself is so fascinating that it's 20,000 years old mm -hmm. and that all cultures have been weaving for many, many years. Uh -huh. And that it began with the women's side of the family because women had to create a trousseau, basically, in order to get married. Okay. So they had to weave certain uh, things, like mm -hmm. four towels, sheets, you know. Uh -huh. It's really interesting to look at what did the woman have to weave in order to get married. Uh -huh. So that all women had to be spinners and weavers throughout mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of years. And most of the looms that were our original looms that were the beautiful, complicated killum patterns and the oriental carpet patterns were woven on mm -hmm. are looms that are very similar to this. Oh, really? Yes. They huh. um, were called ground looms, which means that these were on oh, the yeah, ground. Right. So, and that. women yep. squat over the warp mm -hmm. and... Um, and begin to weave on it. And so very complex weavings can be done on very simple looms. Mm -hmm. And certainly the Navajo looms are very similar to this. They're also a tapestry loom. This is a tapestry loom. Mm -hmm. um, but tapestry really is a technique that depends on how wide apart the warp threads are. Okay, and tapestry just refers to the type to of... To the fact that, right, you're covering the warp threads. Okay. And this is a great loom to weave how you can help and heal the earth or a celebration of the earth and just have the children, you know, gather some grasses and reeds and flowers mm -hmm. in a big bundle on the ground next to it and weave them in. They're so beautiful yeah. as a weaving. Um, also, you can write on pieces of bark like birch bark that you're not taking off the tree but finding mm -hmm. on the ground mm -hmm. and um, weaving things like um, I thank you know thank you for the trees mm -hmm. thank you for the grass thank you you know it's really interesting when you start being grateful for how beautiful nature is right yeah and we're doing one in Bar Harbor right now for the park service that is about that oh, nice. Yeah, and so we're drawing pictures on paper and weaving that in and mm -hmm. weaving in natural mm -hmm. stuff. and um, So it's really been fun mm -hmm. to see what we could do with nature on these looms. I had, there was a, a boy from Russia who was weaving on an earth loom at a school last year. Um, the weaving was about how can I help and heal the earth? Mm -hmm. And people were saying, I'll pick up trash, I'll you know, recycle, and this little boy who had just come from Russia said, I will begin to think peaceful thoughts. And I thought, oh, that's so dear. <laughs> I just loved it. Yeah. Hmm. So, so how it does begin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this loom is for our neighbors. This is going to be a little bit different. And here's the last one that we used oh, as right. our sample. Mm -hmm. That will go on this side. Okay. 
Yep. Yeah. That's good. It shows that it's really getting tight. That's excellent. Great. Wow, wonderful. Some blanket binding that I got at Martin's. Okay. Pounds of it for five dollars. Okay. This roll of it. And I really like the way this is kind of like water. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. okay. the color and yeah, the color is kind of nice, and shiny. it's nice to have something big. Mm -hmm. And I like starting this with what I call um, we could just do two straight rows of weaving. So why okay. don't you start just under, over, under, over? It's interesting. Okay. You can fold it. You can mm -hmm. decide how finished you want to make it. Okay. Which means that it can just, if a child is doing this and they just need to get it over, under, over, under, mm -hmm. that's one thing. If you're a quilter and you don't want any edges to show, <clears throat> you can fold it. Or if you're a rug uh, braider, you know, you're going to want to fold the fabric. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this weaving can be very finished. And so if you do have four kids working on the loom, mm -hmm. you know, some people can be working up here, some people can be working down there, and then you push it so all you don't down. Have to. Well, you then you want to push it all right. down. Right, okay. Because when you finally do the finishing work, mm -hmm. okay, this okay. is great. Now, you can see that, let's say that it's all sort of straight up like this. Okay. And um, that we're just sort of seeing what it looks like. There's mm -hmm. one shed. There's only mm -hmm. two sheds on this loom. The other one is the opposite of this. So the first one, mm -hmm. you want to be able to push down to the bottom, mm -hmm. and you can fold it forward or whatever you want. And then the end, you can just weave back in this end like this, and then weave it toward the back. Okay, and just let it And just let sit. it sit there. Okay. So now let's just try the other shed which is going to be the opposite way. So this is under, so you're going to go over. Okay. And one of the things that I like to do is just kind of wind this up on your hand okay. so that you're not pulling in something long. You're just pulling in something short, okay. pushing okay. it through. I'm going over first, right? So yes. And yes, when okay. I, with my hand, I often go oh, like this. Right. And then hand it off to my hand, mm -hmm. like that. And you don't want to pull it to, too oh. tight like this. Mm -hmm. You want to give it some, you want to feed it. The Mayans call it feeding the loom. So you want to give it enough so it doesn't okay. pull in your selvage threads. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Back here. <laughs> the ones, oh, and you know by looking see, at... By looking at the last shed, you can tell which one is under, which one is over. <laughs> That's right. Perfect. Right. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. And this isn't so bad to have it the two sides either. That's right. Yes, that's right. So it's fun. If you're just mm -hmm. doing this by yourself, you can mm -hmm. make it really finely done. Mm -hmm. But as the steward of the loom, you also get to fix it every night. Right. Meaning okay. that if you wanted it to be slightly... So, now see this... I think I made it. Nope. Okay. At the oh. very end, oh, okay. because we put it back in this far, you're going to be on the oh, same... Oh, I see. All right. Oh, there is. It's under two here. So, But you're going to be on the same shed at the right. end. Right. Okay. So that's true. Okay. So, yeah. See, it's the same shed at the very end. There we go. Now, I'm going to show you. These are the two techniques that I've been using, which are sort of fun. The next mm -hmm. one is I call wrapping, and it's called sumac. You're going to wrap it one way and then wrap it back like this. Okay. And you're going to wrap it back. And Around you can the next one. Yes. Okay. So you can leave it very kind of fluffy here and it sticks out like water. Mm -hmm. This is the sort of water where you can make it kind of stick out like this. Okay. So, here you go. There you go. Yeah. So, sumac is a really great binder. What happens with sumac? You can see that it's not one shed or the other shed. Right. So, this is a weaving technique that evens it all out.
So if a lot of kids have been weaving on, lot, on sheds that don't mm -hmm. all come together, mm -hmm. do a row of sumac. Okay. And it and then brings it all back together. All right, all right. And sumac, I find, is a really helpful weaving technique for this kind of weaving because um, you can fill in a lot of spaces with sumac. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes kids will just weave a big piece up here and leave a big hole here. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, there, what we'll do is come back and look at it after a lot of people have woven on it okay. and look and at restorative what... techniques. Okay. And, um, and I will bring some bark and I have some pens really and some paper to write on paper okay now you don't want to get it too, too loose, loose okay, here then we're gonna... right let's see, right, let's see here. Huh. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. great Mm -hmm. You're not just weaving, but now you get to Do you so, want to come back mm -hmm. then again, and just sort of weave just it sort back of in. Yep. There you go. Kind of hold it. So I think that would be the next thing to do yeah. is think about. So when you're weaving, you're mm -hmm. telling a story. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, here's my ocean. Now I'm going to make a really beautiful beach, and I need a sandy color in here. Mm -hmm. And on the sand, I'm going to sew shells all the way across, like some periwinkles, mm -hmm. some you know, crab, whatever I can find. Mm -hmm. And I might even wrap some rocks with yarn okay. and sew the so rocks that. on okay. here. Uh -huh. And so you're going to make a beach, you know, that comes up to here, say. Mm -hmm. And then you might say, well, now I want my garden to start. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make some brown dirt okay. up to here. Okay. So then you weave some brown yarn in. Mm -hmm. And then on top of the yarn, you're going to weave some green grass mm -hmm. and put some flowers in here. You know, and then you might say, okay, now here's the house. What is that going to look like? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's a light in the window. Or okay. you can just say, or here's the sky. Yeah. Here's the garden in the sky. Mm -hmm. And just make, you know, clouds and, you know, angels. Mm -hmm.